welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I want to share an exciting experience I had during the first round of the McKinsey problem solving game. This game is a gamified test used by McKinsey and company as part of the recruiting process. It's a challenging and stimulating way to access our problem solving skills before moving on to the case interviews. Now, before I dive into the details, let me give you some background about this game. The McKinsey Problem Solving Game is a time limited test that lasts for 60 minutes. It is mandatory for applicants to McKinsey and it falls between the resume screening and the case interviews. You only have the opportunity to play and solve this mini game once in a 12 month period. So it is essential to make the most of it. During the game, McKinsey evaluates 5 key skills. Critical thinking, 2nd decision making, 3rd metacognition, 4th situational awareness, 5th system thinking. These skills are crucial in a complex business environment and reflect the qualities McKinsey seeks in potential candidates. The best part is that you don't need any previous gaming experience or specific business knowledge to excel in this game. Your performance in the game is graded based on two components, product score and the process score. The product score accesses the quality of your solutions and decisions, while the process score evaluates how effectively you approach the problems and your overall problem solving methodology. Within two weeks, McKinsey will inform you whether you have passed or failed the game. So how should we prepare for the exciting challenge? The good news is that McKinsey provides all the necessary resources to help you succeed. Here are some tips to help you prepare effectively for the McKinsey problem solving game. Firstly, practice critical thinking and decision making by solving puzzles, riddles and logical reasoning problems. This will sharpen your analytical skills and enhance your ability to make sound judgments under pressure. The next, read case studies from various industries and develop a problem solving framework. This will enable you to approach complex problems systematically, considering all relevant factors and developing logical solutions. Remember to think both quantitatively and qualitatively. Simulate the time-limited conditions during your practice section. Set a timer and challenge yourself to solve the problems within a specific time frame. This will enhance your ability to think quickly and make efficient decisions. Additionally, work on enhancing your situational awareness by staying updated on current events, industry trends and business news. Lastly, practice collaborative problem solving. Engage in a group activities such as brainstorming sessions or case discussions where you can exchange ideas, learn from others and develop teamwork skills. Remember, collaboration is essential in McKinsey's work environment. So that wraps up my description of the McKinsey problem solving game. It's an exciting and challenging opportunity to showcase your problem solving skills and potentially join the prestigious McKinsey and company. Remember, preparation is the key and with the dedication and practice you can excel in this game. So today we have an exciting case study to discuss. Our goal is to create a new sustainable habitat in an existing region of an island, focusing on maximizing the survival of various species including plants, animals and fungi. We have a given list of animals and species that we will use to determine which species can contribute to a stable food web. Let's dive in. First, look, let's look at the species provided. We have Acropora coral, common eel grass, pagoda cup coral, peacock's tail algae, purple hydrocoral, rockweed, spiral brack, yellow tube sponge, stock cape. This plant and algae species play a crucial role in the ecosystem as primary producers, converting sunlight into energy 
through photosynthesis. To establish a stable food web, we need to consider the interactions between these primary producers and the animal species provided. Let's analyze the animal species and identify which ones can contribute to the food web effectively. From the animal species list, we have Bikea tuna, blue ring angel fish, Clark's animal fish, clown trigger fish, common dolphin fish, hawksbill, sea turtle, Indo Pacific blue marlin, Indo Pacific tarpon, longfin pine net, whale, majestic angel fish, Moorish idol, potato cod, purple tang, tune parrot fish, short tail stingray, spotted eagle ray, giant Pacific octopus, gem tang, Plain angelfish, ice stripe, sergeant fish, coral trout, convict sargent fish, porcupine puffer fish, Pacific triple tail, olive ridley turtle, northern red snapper, yellow tongue, white steam brass, and wahoo. To create a stable food web, we need to consider species that can contribute at different tropic levels. We will select only eight species that form a balanced and sustainable ecosystem. The first species we will include is the Acropora, Coacropara coral. It forms the foundation of the coral reef ecosystem and provides a habitat for many organisms. It serves as a food source for various coral eating fish. To maintain biodiversity, we will include the peacock's tail algae. This primary producers will provide food for herbivorous fish and invertebrates. Next, we include peacock's tail algae. This algae species is a primarily produ primary producer converting sunlight into energy through photosynthesis. It provides food for herbivorous fish and invertebrates. Then additionally we take spiral rack as a type of seaweed. Spiral rack serves as a habitat for small invertebrates and provides food for herbivorous fish and sea urchins. Then we take, uh, now let's consider, uh, next we will add the yellow two sponge. Sponge species filter the organic matter from the water and provides shelter for small organisms. They are consumed by certain fish and invertebrates. Now let's consider the animal species. We will include the giant Pacific octopus, which is a predator feeding on crustaceans, fish and mollusks. It helps control the population of its prey species. For a balanced ecosystem, we will add gem tan. This colorful fish species feeds on algae, including the peacock's tail algae contributing to the balance by controlling algal growth. Now let's include the northern red snapper. This predatory fish feed on smaller fish, crustaceans and squid, helping regulate the population of the prey species. And finally, we will add the wahoo, a predator fish that feeds on a smaller fish, contributing to the balance of the ecosystem. By incorporating these eight species into the habitat, we establish a diverse food web that includes primary producers that is corals, eelgrass, algae, then herbivores that includes fish, invertebrates and predators includes octopus fish. This ensures a sustainable balance of energy flow and promotes the survival of multiple species in the ecosystem. That concludes our case study on creating a sustainable island habitat. Remember, when designing a habitat or ecosystem, it's essential to consider the interactions between different species and the roles in maintaining balance. By prioritizing diversity and interdependence, we can contribute to the preservation of our planet's ecosystem. If you found this case study helpful, please give this video a thumbs up, share it with other others and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more fascinating discussions. Thank you for watching. This is Sharon Benny.